Bhagavan Timiran Hasya Gananda Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Manamapi Shatchiputra Matrasurupam Rupam Tasya Gajamurupuring Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prapta Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Guram Tamatas Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Atafada Gamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajiva Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. The next three names that I'm going to cover, Krishna willing, in Sri Vishnu Sahasranama, Kama Deva, Kama Pala, and Kami. I already gave an introductory talk on these three names. <clears throat> uh, since I gave that talk, which was how long ago? Is this? Almost two months, was it? Since I last spoke on Vishnu Sahasranama, at least six weeks, almost two months. Um, one of my desires was fulfilled. We have the name Kama. Kama Deva fulfills desires. That um, since I started speaking on Vishnu Sahasrana, what happened? First of all, I started off using hard copies of books, um, including as an old book giving uh, English translation of Parashara Bhatta's commentary, and I had a commentary by Shankaracharya, so I was using all these hard copies of books. This was at a time when the internet wasn't so developed, or I, I myself wasn't much using the internet. Uh, but in the meantime, it, at some point in, in my uh, speaking on Vishnu Sastra, and I'm studying the different commentaries, I came across an online commentary in uh, simple English by one Narasimha Krishnamachari, who you can understand by the name is a Sri Vaishnava. Uh, and he had put together online the, the commentaries that I was using, plus some more also. So that's, that's been the basis of the materials that I've been speaking on ever since and I've added some of my own research and realizations and this and that. So for a long time I had a desire to meet this Narasimha and Krishnamachari for doing this tremendous service. must have been a, a very big job to put together all these um, commentaries and put them in simple English, put them together in five volumes on the internet. So I wanted to personally thank him for doing that, um, but I couldn't track out where he is. I asked different people in Sri Rangam when I went, but they, they didn't seem to hear of him. Then not, not very long ago I came across a, uh, a website called Hinduism Stack Exchange and I saw that the moderator of that's interesting website, all kinds of topics discussed there. Uh, the moderator is uh, Keshavan Srinivasan, uh, another Sri Vaishnava. So I, I, from the website, I got his email address. And I, I wrote and asked him, do you know who he is? And he wrote back very promptly and said, uh, yes, I do. But unfortunately, he passed away 10 years ago. It's a fact of this material world that everyone has to pass on. So in one sense, one desire was fulfilled, that at least I, I found out about him, but in another sense that desire isn't fulfilled. I'm sure that his pure desire to meet his Lord must have been fulfilled by this service that he has uh, performed tremendous service. Of course, it won't be appreciated by many, but then 
uh, Krishna appreciates. So I just thought I'd say that something about desire. How I also like to uh, offer a few words of appreciation to this Narasimham Krishna Macharya. I, I wasn't able to do so face to face. Maybe in future. We're all eternal. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this song, I'm going to speak on the name Karma Deva. I remember some time ago, one of my Western disciples living in India, he expressed some, to me, some uh, surprise that it's quite common in India that there are, you, you find people with names like Kamaraj. Here in South India especially, Tamil Nadu, it's a fairly common name. He is surprised because Kama, that word, in spiritual circles, the word karma, it's got a really, generally has a really bad connotation. It's like saying a hunka. It's something, something you really don't want to be associated with. Or you say that person's got a lot of a hunka. Oh, that's not good. Or if you say there's so much calm, so that's not good. But calm can be good also. Everything has its right place and right usage. In fact, at the highest level of devotional service, that of the gopis, and not even of all the gopis, the, their uh, love for Krishna is called kamanuga, following desire, but that's completely pure desire. So Krishna's name, kamadeva, it doesn't mean that somehow or other Krishna's become degraded, not at all. There's absolutely no question of that. Uh, but that we should understand in relation with Krishna, karma is something very good. And uh, karma, karma Dev is a name of one of the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu listed in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and Karma Deva is also one of the names that Srila Prabhupada gave to one of his disciples. It's generally understood to be a name of what we call in English Cupid or the love god. Uh, and then Krishna is the Aprakrita Madam. He's described in Shaitanya Charitamrita as the transcendental Cupid. The, the lust at the topmost level, Adi Rasa, is completely pure those of us who chant the uh, daily the uh, pancharatriki mantras karma gayatri we chant the first word after the bij there's the karma bij that's the first word in the karma gayatri and then who is who is this mantra offered to karma deva karma devaya Vidmehe, I know that, or we know that person. Pushpabhanaya. Pushpaban is also a name for Cupid with his flower arrows. So uh, it's a completely pure name uh, in relation to Krishna, here in Vishnu Sahasranam. Means uh, the two meanings are given by the commentators. Uh, two principal meanings. The one, the one name, one meaning is the one who grants all desires, and the other is those who is desire, the Lord who is desired. So it works both ways. Who grants all desires? Um, Srila Prabhupada many times quoted. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam. Eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman. Srila Prabhupada often quoted this, that there, there are many <coughs> eternal, conscious, living beings, but one of them is the Supreme. He's fulfilling, uh, he's fulfilling the needs and the desires of all. And Srila Prabhupada often quote this and say that the elephant in the jungle is getting his huge amounts of food every day. The little ant is getting what he requires. So surely Krishna will provide everything 
for those who are his devotees. He even provides for the demons and for the insignificant ants and for all the living beings. Will he not provide for everyone? And also, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he quoted this in many contexts. Also, the idea of food shortages. Why are you worried about food shortages? Krishna supplies. Food shortages are made by human beings. There's enough, there's enough food in the world to feed everyone. But then again, some people, they have to starve by their karma. So these, uh, these are the two main understandings. He fulfills all desires. People go to church, to temples, to mosques, or they pray at home, anywhere. They pray to God. Mostly people pray, fulfill my desire. Isn't it? You come from a temple town. Tiruchendur, so many people, Tiruchendur, so many people, they go there, they're pious people, they're going to see Murugan to pray for material desires to be fulfilled. And it seems to be pretty good. People wouldn't go if it didn't work, right? <laughs> Srila Prabhupada often told the story of the, the, uh, the, the Bolsheviks in Russia in the second decade of or second and third decade of the 20th century. They would go in the villages where the, there was a food shortage and they would come with, with a cartload of bread pulled by horse, no doubt. And they would they would say, okay, you villagers, you all go in the church and pray to God, give us this day our daily bread. And they'd come out and say, did he give you bread? No. So you pray to us, dear communist comrades, give us bread. And then they'd bring out the bread and say, see, we're, forget praying to God, you, you come to us. But then Srila Prabhupada pointed out, you rascal communists, you didn't make the bread. It was all grown by, by the, the land and the rain and the sun, which is given by God, you didn't provide it. So it's Krishna who's providing. That's why, one reason why Srila Prabhupada was so heavy on these so-called welfare workers. They, they make a big thing, ah, oh, I'm helping the poor. What can you do to help? Uh, it's a, Krishna provides, you can be a, a, a medium but then you should understand that you are nimitta matram. You are a medium only. You are an instrument. You, otherwise you can't provide anything. This whole thing, we're helping the poor. Just, what can you do? You yourself are poor in, in spiritual knowledge. It's just, it's just a means of inflating the ego of those who think they're helping. Of course, there may be some who have a sincere desire to help. Uh, but a lot of this so-called philanthropy is for uh, personal aggrandizement. And even those who sincerely want to help, they should know that you can really help people by giving them Krishna consciousness, by which they can get free from suffering eternally. So, uh, Parashara Bhatta, he, he particularly uh, says that this refers to the devotees. Of course, Krishna fulfills the desires of everyone. If you want sex, you can become a monkey. Why go to so, why, why go to so much trouble and working hard and having a fashionable hairstyle and trying to attract women and all these things? You want sex and your next life become a monkey. And a male monkey enjoys with so many females. Female enjoy. There's no, there's no uh, laws. There's no marriage. There's no responsibility. Just enjoy. Become a monkey. Why? Instead of acting like a monkey in this life, you can be a, uh, you can be a real monkey in the next life. Or a pigeon. It's another species or, or genus that has uh, lots of sex. 
And some people, if you tell them, say, oh, really? Oh, good. Okay, great. Let's go for it. But they don't realize that's very degrading. <coughs> the living being is meant to live with Krishna in the spiritual world, not jumping from tree to tree like a monkey or jumping from body to body in 8,400,000 species of life. So, uh, Sri Parasha Bhatta quotes from the Shanti Parva. As she says here, Bhagavata, no, yeah, Mahabharata, Shanti Parva. Kama Devas to Bhagavan Sarvesham Sarva Kama Daha. So that very name, the, the meaning of the name Kama Dev is given directly in the Mahabharata. Uh, it's the Supreme Personality of Godhead who Sarva Kamada, he gives all desires, he fulfills the desires of all living beings, but especially uh, Parasha Bharta says for the devotees. It's, it's just like uh, up to the present day there's, there's some politician, they may they might they might do something for, they're supposed to do something for the people, uh, to benefit the people, but especially their own friends and their own relatives, people who are close to them, they'll make sure that they're well provided for. Uh, <coughs> Sri Shankara gives the understanding that this name means that he is the one who is ultimately sought out and desired by people who pursue the Purusharthas, which are given in different orders. Uh, some, in some they put Kama first, Kama Artha Dharma Moksha. Uh, Srila Prabhupada put it, Dharma Artha Kama Moksha. The, the four goals of life, Dharma, Translated as religiosity, because that's maybe the closest you can do in English. Dharma, artha, uh, economic needs. Karma, desire, fulfilling desires. And moksha, getting moksha means to be free of dharma, artha, and karma. Although one has to practice dharma in order to attain moksha. So, karma that is consistent with dharma, dharma avi ruddho bhute shu kamosmi bharatarshava, that desire which is pursued in concord with dharma, that Krishna says is me. So this, the, the, the Lord, in other words, this means the Lord who is worshipped by the Varnashram system in which people who are more or less in mundane consciousness, but they're looking up. Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Padam Sada Pashanti Surya Ho. Pious people in this world, but looking up to the spiritual world. So he is the one, Vishnu is the one they're looking up to. Uh, and they're expecting he'll fulfill our desires, but the... Uh, one of the wonderful attributes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is that even if we approach Him with material desires, if we're not wicked in consciousness, and people who approach Him, they are pious people, then uh, they'll become purified. Chatur vidha bhajante mang jana sukriti no arjuna. Arto jignyasur artarti jnani ca bharatarshaba. People who even with material desires approach Krishna, uh, they are called pious, they're not pure devotees, but they can become purified and come to Krishna. <laughs> so by, by following the path he gives, then gradually they come to the platform. Yeshang tantakatam papam jana nam punya karma nam te dvanda moha nir mukta bhajante mangjara vataha. They're not worshipping him very seriously, or they may be worshipping him very seriously, but not with a proper motive. But when they become purified by, by worshipping him, 
then uh, they become free from sinful activities and sinful desires and misconceptions and they worship him with full durata, determination. Uh, so this is the uh, idea given by Sh Shankara. I, I, well, I developed it a bit more than that. The commentators, they give just a little commentary and the idea is that others can uh, s speak on that or understand it in more depth. <clears throat> So we should be careful what we desire. <laughs> desire Krishna, we'll go to Krishna. Desire to be like a monkey, we'll become a monkey. Uh, some other points about this because, uh, yeah, I have spoken on this, but I'll speak on it again. That Krishna, he is uh, Kamaraja, the king of desire. But the pure nature of his desire is discussed in Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, 11th chapter, at the end of that chapter, in which it's discussed how Krishna is enjoying with his queens in Dwaraka. And I'll read Srila Prabhupada's translations of a few verses. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, out of his causeless mercy, appeared on this planet by his internal potency. Sambhavami Atmamayaya, we have in Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> he appears by his internal potency. And Krishna enjoyed himself among competent women as if he were engaging in mundane affairs. From our perspective, it looks like he's some mundane enjoyer. Just like we have here in India, there are the, uh, the big Bollywood film stars, or, or the big rich people, they have their families, and they're big enjoyers. And it's been in the news, I see the Google News every, every day for about the last three weeks, there's been about... Um, Priyanka Chopra getting married, and then it came up about Isha Ambani. So they're, they're like the royalty of them. She's getting engaged or something. So they're like the royalty. And the common people, we the poor, I mean, I'm, I'm not one of them, but it's like the subjects. They, they're very happy to see the king, or the prince and the princess and all this kind of thing. And they're, they're enjoying. The rich people, we hope they're cultured, the Ambani family, their uh, Valab Sampradaya Vaishnavas, worshippers of Srinathri Krishna. So they're engaging in mundane affairs, but it's not, it's not gross in the, in the sense that they're somewhat cultured and sophisticated in their family life. Ah. So, but it's mundane. So Krishna might appear like that, that he's just another aristocratic person. But no, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And everything he does is completely pure. And if we understand that, we also become purified. Janma karma chamedi gam evang yoveti tattvataha if we simply understand and accept fully that Krishna is, everything he does is completely pure, then we become purified and we can go and join him also. We will go and join him. So, getting back to the reading from the Bhagavatam, although the queen's beautiful smiles and furtive glances this is uh, talking about the Bollywood. This is what Bollywood's made of, I would guess. They have the beautiful women on the screen with their nice smile. And ah, people want to be hit by the arrows of Karma Dev, of the mundane Karma Dev, that some beautiful woman will look at me and smile. But 
Although the queen's beautiful smiles, these are Krishna's queens, and furtive glances were all spotless and exciting. That's why Brahmacharya sannyasis and cultured men, they don't look at women. They're not supposed, because you're not supposed to have eye-to-eye -eye contact because that can be very dangerous. But the Krishna's queens would look at him. His own wives, they couldn't look at him. And although they could conquer, they, the queens, could conquer Cupid himself by making him give up his bow in frustration. And even though the tolerant Shiva could fall victim to them, Still, despite all their magical feats and attractions, they could not agitate the senses of the Lord. <laughs> Krishna appeared to be like a mundane enjoyer, but it goes on to describe from the Bhagavatam. The common materialistic conditioned souls speculate that the Lord is one of them. Out of their ignorance, they think that the Lord is affected by matter, although he is unattached. So Krishna is not affected by any mundane desire, but he is affected by the queens, but not in a material way. It's a very subtle point to understand. Then uh, the verse comes, uh, very important verse, etad ishanam ishasya prakriti sto pitagunai na yujyate sadatmas taya this is the divinity of the personality of Godhead. This is what makes him God. Or one of the one of the ways by which we can understand that he is Isha. That even though he's within the material nature, he's not affected by their qualities. He's within the material world, but he's not affected by it. Similarly, those who have Devotees who take shelter of the Lord do not become influenced by the material qualities. Uh, in Bhagavatam also, there's uh, one uh, quite commonly quoted verse, not super commonly, but uh, one of the verses that's quoted, uh, it's mentioned in Hari Bhakti Vilas as one of the verses that we can chant when we rise in the morning, uh, at the end of the tenth canto, Shukdev Goswami is praising that Krishna, who he's described in detail in 90 chapters, is past. In detail means Krishna is unlimited, but in some detail, compared to the various avatars, Krishna is described in detail in the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So this name Kama, Kama Devam comes in this verse. It's a verse of glorification of Krishna. Jayati jana nivaso devaki janma vado yaduvara pare shat sward harbir asyan adharmam sthira chara vrijana ghana susmita sumukhena, srimukhena. Rajapura Vanitanam Vardhayan Kama Devam. I'll read the translation, although it really needs uh, to be unpacked. There's so much, but I'll just read a simple translation. Lord Sri Krishna is he who is known as Jananivasa, the ultimate resort of all living entities, and who is also known as Devikinandan or Yashoda Nandan, the son of Devaki and Yashoda. This Devaki Janma Vadaha is a very important term. means he's said to be the, the son of Devaki. People say like that, but we know he's actually born of Yashoda. So it has a little, uh, little hint there. But then again, I believe it's Jiva Goswami in his commentary, or maybe Sanatan in his commentary says that anyway, Devaki is the name of Yashoda anyway. So if we say Devaki Nandan, that also means Yashoda Nanda. So, getting back to the translation. He is the guide of the Yadu dynasty. Ah. 
and with his, with his mighty arms he kills everything inauspicious, as well as every man who is impious. By his presence he destroys all things inauspicious for all living entities moving and inert. His blissful smiling face always increases the lusty desires of the gopis of Vrindavan. May he be all glorious and happy. So there we have the name Kama Devam comes in the Bhagavatam. But, 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 there's, this has to be understood that here Kama Devam, it doesn't exactly mean the God of love. The commentators say that this term Kama Devam means that he stimulates the karma, Jiva Goswami says that he stimulates the karma, the love of the damsels of Raja, which shines forth. Here, devam means it's derived from div, divyati, divyati, which means that which shines. So, karma devam means he stimulates the, the love of the gopis. Not exactly the god of, not that he is the deva, the god of love. It doesn't exactly mean that because Vadhayan Kama Devam. Uh, Rajavadu, what is it? Rajapuravanitanam Vadhayam Kama Devam. So he increases the calm of the, the gopis. That's what it means. So this, uh, this naturally leads us to think of uh, Madan Mohan, is the common name. Madan Mohan. Uh, Krishna who bewilders he who bewilders the world manmata manmata uh, there are different words given in Shastra uh, he is the deity who, is, who establishes our relationship with Krishna instead of directing Instead of directing our desires and enjoying this material world, we have to direct them to Krishna and establish. Instead of trying to establish relationships in this material world, establish them with Krishna. Uh, in this regard, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in discussion of the transcendental Cupid, uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami gives the uh, description Vrindavane aprakrita nobina madan kama gayatri kama bije jara upashan purusha joshit kibas tabara jangam sarva chitta karshak sakshat manmata madan. So in Vrindavan there is the transcendental, ever fresh, always new Cupid who is worshipped by the kama gayatri and the kama bija. Ah, not only women, but Males, even the all living beings, even the even the stationary living beings, he at, attracts their heart, their consciousness. He is directly the bewilderer of Cupid himself. Baladev Vidya Bhushan, continuing his. Description of this series of names in relationship with Krishna's pastimes as he enters Mathura for the for the first time, coming from Vrindavan. He, uh, no, this is in Vrindavan. Uh, it is in Vrindavan, and he says that Krishna. He interprets this in a very different way. He says that Krishna, he looked very hmm, handsome. Very desirable and splendid after killing the Keshi demon. So it's a very different derivation altogether. Hare Krishna.